Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, to the greatest podcast on earth. Step right up and experience the magnificence that is the Two Ring Circus Podcast. You'll gasp. <gasps> you'll laugh. <laughs> And you'll be amazed at what comes next. Amazing. Don't worry about the smell. It's just the stars of our show, Tom Italiano. Oh, hi. And Matt Bradshaw. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to episode 99. Out of... Are we finishing up after this? After... Let's just... Let's not do 100. Are you done? Let's resign. Have you had enough? No, I fucking love this, mate. It's the greatest. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We, we, actually, how many more years do, can we, have we got left in us? How many more episodes? What do you mean? Well, like, how many more? If we got oh, 50 a year. Oh, second. 50 a year. Another yeah. Two, I, got, I reckon I got another 30 odd years left in me. 30 fucking really odd years. <laughs> <laughs> 30 really odd years. I'd have thought. Yeah. And evens. Even years as well. Yeah, right. Okay. So another 30 years. 35 is 50. Oh, yeah. We can get well over a 1,000 episodes, mate. It's cool. That's exciting. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Far out. Uh, how do you feel do about that? Do you reckon that? I've got 30 years left in me? Yes. I do. Okay. But it depends. <laughs> it does. It depends. It sure does on a, on a number of things. I wonder... Ooh, all right, well, uh, let's talk about that. What do you think is going to be your undoing, health-wise? I don't think anything's going to be un my undoing health-wise. I think I'm going to remain in perfect health until... What? What, do you, how do you think you're going to end your time on this earth? I don't know. I, I think... I think. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember if we've spoken about it on the, on the podcast before, but I am of the opinion that nothing bad is ever going to befall me. Oh, well, that's good. But by bad, you mean accident. No, no. No, I mean, you're going to live forever. you literally going to be I mean, I just, I don't, I don't feel like disease is going to be a part of my life in any way. So I don't think I'm invulnerable. I can't walk in front of cars and expect things to be okay. But I never think anything bad's going to happen to me. <clears throat> I think, I, like, I mean, aside from the fact that I get a lot of colds and stuff, I keep really good health, mm. which I'm incredibly thankful for. Because health is absolutely one of those things that you don't, that you very much take for granted, that most people absolutely take for granted. And it's only when they're in the throes of some awful, even if it's just a cold, but like a bad cold kind of thing, we just think, <laughs> I don't want to feel like this anymore. And then you get better in two days, and then you forget that you ever felt terrible. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, right. That's interesting. Hmm. So, you know, aside from the fact that I nearly died 15 years ago, um, <laughs> yeah, because um, of disease, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think I'm going to be fame. fame. All right, well, uh, come back next week for episode 100. Um, oh, in fact, what are we doing? <laughs> oh. Alright, so I got some medical advice for you folks. No, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not trained. I'm just a physician. Alright, so please. <laughs> Take this advice with a grain of salt, but if you can avoid dropping a PA speaker on your toe, I would highly advise it. <laughs> avoid that if you can. That's, in that's incredible advice, Dr. Dom. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, really, it's about risk aversion. So yes. perhaps it's more falls into... You know, should be oh and s uh, Yeah, I was going to say that's more of a, a compliance issue, but <laughs> when you're in your own home... Uh, these rules and regulations, hmm. uh, they're, well, they're not in place. Yeah, so, yeah, the, I dropped a speaker on my toe today. Well, first I hurt my back. <laughs> and because I twinged my back while I was picking up the speaker, 
I ended up dragging another speaker off the trolley, and that's what hit my toe. Uh, it turns out my back's fine. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> turns out I have any pain in my back. Uh, oh, Dom's toe oh. is very, very dark indeed. Or maybe my back does hurt, but my toe hurts more, so I have... Like, that's taken priority in my... Oh, yeah, okay. my senses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, when someone says, oh, got a sore shoulder, it's like, do you want me to punch your other shoulder? Yeah, uh, that's Even you up? Yeah. 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 Or when your mum says, stop <clears throat> you crying. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> yeah. My mum's great one is, is, when I was a kid, was, if you fall down from there and die, I'll bloody kill you. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. She was great. <laughs> she was great. Mom still is great. Yeah. But she was full of like those kind of... Um, Aphorisms? Threats. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, fuck, I better not die, otherwise my mum will kill me. My mum once uh, told me when I was... So I was... We were living in Wyala, which would have made me... Uh, we just got back from Indonesia, so I would have been nine years old, maybe. Um, and I'd been poorly behaved. Uh we had a tree. I, I can't think what sort of tree it was at the front. It wasn't a it wasn't a palm, but the it didn't. It had branches, but they were like palm branches. But they were fronds. Yeah, but they weren't. But it wasn't a palm, so right. I can't adequately explain. It, but right. they were quite whippy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she made me go outside and get one for her to smack oh, me with. Oh wow! How's that for punishment? That's great. She didn't smack me. Right, go pick but, your punishment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pick the one you think will hurt the least, or yeah, right. Yeah. Isn't that weird what comes back to you? Yeah, like well, a herpes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That sounds awful. What? <laughs> to think that that would come back to you. Yeah. Did you yeah. not ever think that when you heard that Celine Dion song? Well, it's all coming back to me now. Oh, no. I didn't. Well, I've not oh. had a herpes experience. <laughs> no? I'm amazed. You haven't lived. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm amazed that because um, I had a relationship for 10 years with someone who always got uh, cold sores, but never got one. Anyway, do you catch those? Are those? Mm -hmm. you, yeah, yeah. Never got anything like that. So mm. luckily for me. Well done, you. Yep. Although, shame on her. Well, you know, not for having herpes, for not having given you them anywhere. <laughs> huh? Yeah. See what I'm. Well, thanks for sticking. You pick it up, up when I'm laying down. <laughs> yeah, I think what you're trying to say is. Oh uh, no, no, no! Please don't. <laughs> Just, no, come on, let's be nice. No, I, I Let's think for you one are, time be nice. No, I think you are being nice. I think you're sticking up for your mate because, you know, there was a broken relationship and, you know, she hurt my feelings and you're like, oh, well, fuck you for... Yes, you know, yeah, I for am. Not, and why it, didn't you give him more head? Oh, oh, no, then I went and said it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Look what I've done. I've lowered the whole tone of the 99th percentile. Do you know, it's interesting because I usually do that. So well done to you for Thanks, stepping man. in every now and then. And... Thanks. Yep. Do you know what? Speaking of dark toes, <laughs> where's the oh, thing? So uh, Dr. Oh, Tim, we just got from our sound engineer, is for me to go home now, get the get an egg yolk, whip it up with some flour, and then wrap it around my toe. We've been doing, they've been f using that to fix toes for thousands of years, apparently. Oh, not just toes, but like broken bones. And I said, who has? He said, you know, the Chinese. I said, well, there are a lot of them. And he said, you know, the Chinese. <laughs> he, said, he said, you know, the Chinese. And I said, well, there are a lot of them. It's clearly effective. Well, in that people were dying from dropping speaker on toe related gangrenous <laughs> issues. Uh, I remember living and working in China and uh, uh, Chinese businessmen would um, buy us drinks and they would get a pint of Guinness and crack a raw egg in it. Yeah. And then, ha ha, all night strong, is what they would say. Then you would have to play Lionel Richie for them. <laughs> yeah, no, that was their thing. Like, you have a Guinness with an egg in it and you'll be... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did it work? Um, there are a lot of them. <laughs> well, that was my point. <laughs> that was their point. Yeah, right on the end of it. Yeah. Um, yes, there we go. I've uh, I've got a bit of a sore toe. It's hurting. So. Yes. That's why God. That's why God made the movie. I. Have you seen that film? No. Oh. I didn't. Re what? What? 
the film that that song's from? No. One Trick Pony. The album One Trick Pony is a soundtrack to the no. film One Trick Pony written by Paul Simon Did and it? starring Paul Simon as a folk singer trying to make his way whilst touring around the country even though he's got a wife and a young child at home and how the being a musician puts tension on the family. Fuck. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, that's what it's from. Yeah. Well, goodness me. Good gravy. Yeah. His name is Jonah and there's a song called Jonah and there's like, and the lyric is, some say Jonah was swallowed by a whale, but I say Jonah was swallowed by a song. It's beautiful. Mm. 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 I think it's his greatest album. Really? It's The movie's not wonderful, but uh, as far as... I have the album, song, you gifted as it to me. As far as songs goes. Ah. Oh. Mm. Shit, yeah, okay. it's glorious. All right, I'll go back and give it another. <sighs> Late review. <laughs> One Trick Pony by Paul Simon's a good album. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Please continue. Oh, uh, Dark Toe. Yeah. You've seen Dark Tower? No. All right. No, no, no. But I... Um, we were walking back to the car from our gig... And uh, Matt was walking. Yeah, Dom was hobbling. I was hobbling. Um, I didn't realise that uh, the genie in Aladdin was blue. Yeah, he is. I thought he was brown with blue clothes. No. And not because I've seen the latest version of Aladdin, where the genie is brown with blue clothes, presumably. What are you talking about? Didn't you say Will Smith is a new Aladdin? He's blue. Oh, shit, what? Yeah, he's, not, he's painted blue. Which is why I made the joke about, look at the cultural appropriation of the Martians in this movie. Because, you know, because white people can't paint their skin brown in films. It's not cool to do that. Right. But brown people can paint their skin blue. Well, now, you see, this is why I didn't understand that you were making a joke. I totally understand. Uh, Most people don't understand. Because you said cultural appropriation and then you said Will Smith. And I thought, well, what's happening? Is he not allowed to be brown? He is brown. Yes. And the genie always was. Turns out he wasn't. Who knew? Can I... Uh, now, I know we're an Australian-based podcast, right? But it seems to me the skin colour of people who are of African origin is brown. Yes. But they're referred to as black. Yes. Do we know why this is... And but people from the Middle East are referred to as brown. Yes. I'm very confused about this. Yeah, that's a fair question. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. And I'm just no, 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 no. I'm Absolutely. not trying to be okay. a jerk. But now there are some. That's a perfectly valid question. There are some people from, you know, um, Indigenous Australians and and from African origin mm. who are very, very dark. Yes. Almost black. Yes. But still not black. Yes. I kind of feel like. I'm a bit I feel like I have to go away and now that that's been brought up because I've thought about this before I'm like I wonder why that is but I've never okay. looked, I don't know. can I that. can I give you a, a, a 2019 tip yeah, yeah we don't call them black or brown anymore we call them people of colour now I realise that but uh, I think in media circles people still say black America you know do they yeah no yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Here yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah, maybe you listen to different media sources. And even, even I don't know. I just kind of, uh, it's like a triggery type thing that I kind of go. Do people get worried about this kind of stuff? Like, why is that happening? And why, why is that? You know, Sorry, do people get worried about about you know the right way to to? Well, I mean, for example, right for me. That skin colour is not that colour, but it's that colour, but people say that colour. So, like, yeah, what, you know, what's the go? It's the, it's the wrong. Like, I'm wearing a black T-shirt. <laughs> like, it's not brown. You know? <laughs> I'm not trying to be a dick. No, no, yeah. oh, that's, a, that's a fine question, yeah. except that, that people of colour is the, is the new accepted phrase. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if there was someone in front of you, would you say, they were, would you say this is... A coloured person, or was this? I, I don't know. I, well, I don't know. now, and yeah. that is a really interesting semantic to me. You don't say coloured person; you say no. person of colour. Right. It's the same fucking thing. It's tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there are just there are accepted phrases yeah. that just they fall into common parlance. 
common usage and we just we understand that those are the things we have to say at any given point in history mm. yeah yeah I guess you can't you know allowed to be colloquial unless you are of that heritage absolutely that mm. yeah and that's the same thing with fucking gays and queers and that whole thing uh, that's, yeah. and faggots like no no that's our word that's that whole thing yeah which is you know we want equality but we don't want equality <laughs> Oh yeah, but I understand that because that I mean that's 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 appropriating a word that's been used as a as a, in a pejorative way for sure. a really long time, and then yeah. you absolutely and and the same with um with African Americans. Yeah. Using. Yes. That word. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. But not spelt the same way. No, I get it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. look at us! <sighs> Should I got hot in here real quick? I know. <laughs> Yeah, oh, just yeah, those shows. kind of things. Um, look, this podcast for me uh, does play the role quite often of uh, here's a here's a question that I don't know the answer to. Uh, what does this mean, Matt? And uh, usually you fix the world for me. <laughs> Do I? Tell me what I, I fix don't the know. lights for you at the yeah, very least. Well, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. I shone a light on the. Uh, on the subject at hand, as it were. Well done. Thanks, man. Anything else happening for you? I feel like I've been a very insular this last week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, I feel I feel like I've just been still working on my album thing and that's taking way longer than expected. And it, hmm. um, How much longer than expected? No, just, you know... No, like, like like twice the amount of time you allotted to it, which seems to be the general rule for me. Oh, uh, it's definitely the general rule for me. No, um, it's on track. I was hoping... Yeah, it's, I think it's on track for what I expected, which was the end of May. I will have it in my hands to be able to give out to people. Okay. Um, but when I say with things taking longer than expected, like, for example, I was a bit late getting to the person who's going to help me with the artwork and photography and that person's gone on a holiday as of yesterday and so we got about like we got the design done but the rest of it like just fonting and things like that and spell checking all that I've had to go in and and do that myself but because there's a design element to it I've actually had to spend like I spent about seven hours today in a program that I don't know how to use, deciphering how to use it in order to get it right. So it's like, well, there's my day gone before yeah, yeah. I drop the thing on my foot. Yeah, because um, the learning curve with this stuff, and you've, you've, because um, InDesign is very much like Photoshop, but you don't really use Photoshop. No. Yeah. Yeah. I've used Photoshop well before. The same, but it's almost I've, the same language, except it, and then it's not yeah, as well. I've used Photoshop before. The other issue with these kind of programs <coughs> is. They are so complex that there's no uniform way to use them. Does that make sense? So, for example, if you want to put a text box into some part of the thing, mm -hmm. well, there is a whole bunch of ways that can work. And you, you can put an individual text box if you want columns like this for each thing, or you can put one and then put columns and it all just populates like that. There's all kinds of ways to yeah. so be like, well, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Because <clears throat> when I used Photoshop 12 years ago, Photoshop now is like a completely different program to what true. it was then. So, I mean, it, yeah. yeah, It's and, evolved along the way, but when you go from here to here, it's all one? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, if you've gone with the evolving, not so, not so okay. but I've just stepped, stepped away from that stuff completely. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, that just takes your whole day when you were hoping to... Dom Insulano. Insulano. You said you've been insular. Yeah, good, good, mm. good one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the stuff. So uh, now I've spent two minutes saying I feel like I've been insular. What uh, have you been? <laughs> <laughs> um... What's on your horizon? Why don't I... Well, no, before I talk about my horizon, let me talk about my, my back horizon. Um, <laughs> uh, that's... Uh, mm. My, my sunset horizon. Mm. Mm. I think I just had a stroke. <laughs> okay, be all right. Yeah. No, no, hey, come on. 
Um, for the for the sake of uh, not because I need to talk about it, but just because I feel like sometimes if you tell something about yourself that maybe other people hear it and think, oh yeah, fuck, I feel like that too, and I'm not uh, alone or silly about it. So I haven't thought about this, but I'm just going to talk about what happened last night, which was we were all supposed to go out together. And I uh, couldn't. So a bunch of friends, Dom and Kat and V and like, so nine of us, including me. Is that right? Would it be? Mm. Yep. Uh, we're all supposed to go out for dinner and I uh, just couldn't, f couldn't face being in a, even though they were my friends, I just couldn't face being in a room full of people. And not that there were other people around, I just, I just needed to, I don't know, somehow decompress by myself. But, and that's all fine and dandy, because we all, I'm sure we all get like that, where it just, I just don't want to. But I felt like I was obligated to go because I said I would go. And I need to stress again, these are my friends. So why the fuck wouldn't you want to go and hang out with your friends? Um, especially when you're feeling, I mean, on the surface, you would think it's counterintuitive that when you're feeling kind of small and vulnerable, that why wouldn't you want to go and hang out with people who love you and would potentially bring you out of feeling like that? But I couldn't pull myself out of that and I couldn't make my brain understand that going into that social friendly inclusive situation actually would have been probably better for me um, <clears throat> but I was in Frankston and drove halfway to the city uh, at half past five at night um, berating myself for not for, for either not just fucking sucking it up and going and doing the thing that I'd said I would do um, and and perversely also berating myself for um, not being able to make the decision that I knew deep down inside where I live was the right thing for me which was just go home and just be by yourself because you're not going to be any fun if you go and hang out with these people. Um, so just don't do it to them. Like don't be that fucking dour. Hmm. So <laughs> uh, I drove halfway there and during the journey, like slowed down for, you know, left, turns to go back home uh, but then didn't make the turn and on a couple of occasions said you fucking idiot just fucking go just go and be with all your friends and have a good time and stop thinking about going home and just like see through your commitment and and also be aware that you've been in these situations before and when you've gone and done the thing you have felt better for it um, which is so weird to do that stuff out loud as well like I'm in my car by myself <laughs> fucking hell dude just get your shit together uh, and in the end I didn't come <laughs> uh, so I rang our friend Paul who was who had um, organised for us all to go and uh, it rang once and cut out and so I, I pulled over and I started to write him a message to say, I'm really sorry, dude, uh, I, I can't come. I actually tried to call to explain, but mm. anyway, I didn't finish the message and continued, continued driving, and then he rang me back. What's going on? And I said, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I just, I don't, I can't, I don't. And he was really good. He didn't ask me to explain myself or anything. He just, I don't know if he heard it in my voice or whatever, but he was just, yeah, no worries, man, that's fine. And, um, 
So that's my story. Hmm. And I really, I, I still wore it today. So, so last night I just sat at home with the cat um, and uh, watched a movie called Kung Fu Hustle from 2004, a Hong Kong movie, and it was fucking great because yeah. I've been waiting to see it for ages. Um, not since 2004, but a long time. Um, and the cat and I just cuddled and uh, I don't treat myself very well when I'm feeling like that. I mean, I, I, mentally I don't treat myself very well when I'm feeling like that, but also like we fucking ate a bag of corn chips together and she, I, I have to lick all the salt off them because it's bad for her little tiny, <laughs> her little tiny cat veins, um, probably. Uh, and, um, but I, I get a kind of a hangover from that stuff as well. Not the bad food, um, the bad feelings. So I was kind of wearing it even when I saw you tonight, but hung out with you and did the gig and the gig was great and I'm fucking, I'm back. So I just had a little fucking meltdown. So the only reason I'm sharing it is um, just because uh, this shit does happen to people and it doesn't make it, um, despite the fact that I shouted at myself and called myself a dickhead, it actually doesn't mean you should shout at yourself and call yourself a dickhead. Just accept that sometimes shit like that happens and you feel like that sometimes and that's okay and my car has got a mind of its own. There we go, it's back. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Anything else? <laughs> uh, nah, nothing else. Big week of gigs and I'm back and thank you for the gig tonight because it, it, it pulled me out of my fucking thing. And for all the, all the times that you and I have been on here, I don't actually really often talk that much about my own mm. stuff. Mm. Um, but I just, yeah, I just, on the way here tonight, I thought that's actually probably worthwhile talking about. Because I've got a couple of friends of mine at the moment going through um, rough patches. And, um, uh, and with at least one of those people, I've really opened up to her about um, the stuff that I, I go through and have gone through my whole life just as a way of trying to help normalize how that feels for her yeah because we all like of course try to present like everything's good um and the fake it till you make it thing really works for me well okay that's that's interesting the the, the going to the gig and putting the gig face on and fucking yeah. It has. It, 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 history has proven to me that that works really well for me. Um, but it can it it can tend to be unsustainable if you have to do it for a long period of time. Mm. It is. Um, that stuff is like a bad diet, though, where you can, you know, you can be a skinny fat person. Sure. Do you know I mean like you know you can have a pretty bad diet, and it not look like you have it, mm. and then you've got type 2 diabetes at 45 and, you know, heart disease at 60. Mm. Um, so the whole, you know, that just pushing through strategy and dealing with the symptoms, dealing with, you know, I think they do kind of uh, become layer upon layer upon layer. Um, what's it, what are they called? Princess in the Pea kind of vibe. Um, so I was having an absolute... <gasps> Oh. oh, stop that thing. Uh, I was having uh, a total meltdown leaving the house today, which is, I absolutely guarantee that's why I ended up dropping the thing on my huh. foot. Like, which was great, actually. Because <laughs> it turned out that it snapped me out yeah, of yeah. my meltdown, like, in seconds. What, what, what was wrong? But I don't do that thing with the... I don't do that, um, you know, you sort of... The talk that I have uh, out loud isn't about, you know, you were saying, I just, you know, don't be a fucking idiot and go like, I don't, um, I don't talk like that to myself. Um, but I catastrophize in a completely different way. So it's interesting to hear. Um, like, I don't do that, but I feel like somewhere, I feel like it, what I do plays exactly the same. Mm. It's the same role, but I I wonder if that is a also, um, uh, like a, a, 
a, a subconscious technique to get you to do the thing that you, maybe your body needs, which is to give yourself a break, like to turn you, to turn you around and go home and have that time because you were on eight days straight. Yeah, I guess. And um, I mean, I was certainly very aware that last night was the only night I'd had off for yeah. a long time and was going to until next Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Staring down the barrel of um, of just, you know, intensity for a long period of time um, can do all kinds of things to you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Physically and mentally. And, yep. Very true. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for telling us. <laughs> yeah. I'm good now. I didn't eat today as punishment for eating so poorly yesterday. <laughs> Had a couple of beers. Today? At the gig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, but I was like, if that was like, I didn't eat today, but I stayed at home and had a couple of beers during the no, day no, no. before the no, gig, no, no, then no, I was no, going to no. have to organise an intervention of some kind. No, no. I had some work to do today, couldn't be drinking. Uh, Although I was singing, and a couple of drinks would have done me quite nicely. Right. All right, I mm. get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's all. Problem shared is a problem halved, or whatever the fucking phrase is. Is there a phrase? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's not a, like there's a penny saved is a penny earned, but there's also a problem oh, okay. shared is a problem. It's like a two heads diminished, but that's bike. not the right. No, I'll look it up. I'll post it in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting too when you you're in that situation and you um, you go through what you know you, you went through last night in the car by yourself, and then the self talk being what it was, and then it kind of gets you what gets you over that hump and sends you. Either home or to the thing. Like you said, so many times you've done that and you've gone, it's been great. Yeah. Right. And then there's the looking back on it going, what was that all about? And then you go, well, I don't even remember. Yeah. Because a lot of the times you're in the moment so deeply that the behaviour doesn't seem even connected to a source. Yeah. Like it feels quite disconnected, which is why you go, what the fuck are you doing, mate? Like, well, I assume that's because I don't speak to myself that way, but I, you know, I totally hear how that could manifest that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was really disappointed in myself. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of, um, a lot of butter last night. A lot of butter? Yeah, it was a French restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would have been uh, good. I love butter. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to say you missed out. I heard it was really good. It was lo- it was lovely, yeah. And I heard it was a really good time as well, yeah. lots of laughs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, it was great. Um, girl I know, Rowley Williams, sang, and she did like a whole gig with, in French. And, you know, is awesome. But it was really, yeah, it was a cool place. I, I would go back there regularly and the food was great. Cold? Mm. Philippe. Mm. Mm. Collins Street, yeah? Yeah, but like down one of the alleys. Right. So I think the address is Collins, but it's like downstairs, down an alley. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, it was rad. Well, next time. Well, you were missed. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kung Fu Hustle was good. Great. Mm. Uh, I haven't really watched a film lately. No? No. No. Ah, oh, I did. Maybe I didn't. T- did we say this the last one? No, we... um. Uh, Two Fridays ago, I saw the new Avengers film. Mm. Cat and I were in town. Um, I think I didn't... I had a gig late. I didn't have an early gig on the Friday, so, you know. Um, was it Good Friday? Anyway, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Point is, it was a Friday, and uh, we went into town to do some stuff. And I said to Cat, do you want to see a movie? And she goes, yeah, right, what's on? I said, well, Avengers is on. She's like, no way am I ever going to watch that. Right, because she hates the superhero films and I said well what else is on and she's like the woman in the scary fingers pyjamas or whatever it was called uh, the curse of the weird woman or I don't know it was some horror anyway it was a horror movie looking thing and she likes the those things the woman in the scary fingers pyjamas <laughs> I don't know what it was called um, but uh, she's like oh, I'll go see the scary one and I'm like they're on at the same time but yours is an hour and a half and mine's three hours 
and because I could get the free movie tickets thing, I gave I go well you go see yours and then come in at the end and just sit with me for the last hour of my film. So she did. But during the whole thing, she's texting me about how scary her film is. And then she comes in at the end. You know, it's like the twenty-first film of a series of films where the whole story is intertwined. Where if you miss <laughs> one movie, you miss elements of this particular film. Okay. Right. And she's like, "Why are they doing that?" I'm like, "No, oh. no, 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 no! You can't <laughs> say I hate these films and then come and start asking questions." <laughs> so I think she asked about three questions, and I was like, Shh. "Okay, okay, okay." So it was quite funny. Oh, I might have gone to see the scary film, would I? Yeah, but you were in Geelong with us at the time. No, but... You were two and a half hours away somewhere else. You could have seen. I could have up. got there for the last half yeah. hour of yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I will point out, is a really funny... Is a really funny and thing. ask all the same questions as Kat did, by the way. Now, there may be some people who uh, have not seen this film, have no intention to, or, have, or are intending to, or whatever. This does not ruin the film. As you can imagine, it's a superhero movie. There is a fight scene. There is a battle of some kind. Right. Um, there is a bit in it and uh, for me and almost everyone else I've spoken to about it who has seen the film totally took us out of the film it was like you in this movie it ah. is going awesome it's a fight scene like what's going to happen it's a full girl power moment where all of the female characters like in the middle of this fight just like somehow all line up together right and it's like so fucking obvious mm. the concept and like uh, why yeah like it's, it's a movie and it's patronising it's so patronising yeah. and the thing is too like it does it did nothing to propel the story forward it was nothing to do with character it was nothing to do with scenario right it was just statement and it's like and it was because of that it, it kind of took you out of it because mm. it's like well that what's weird they did it in the, in the last one kind of when um, three of the fe- you know one female character looked like she was going to get done and then two other female characters came in to fight the bad female character not so not so bad kind of in context no. of a big a big thing but it was this thing but they, describe that, but they lined them all up in a row getting ready for the next onslaught type thing yeah and I was like oh man didn't have well, to do no, that a woman oh, well didn't have to do that it was yeah, it was it was patronising and it was like it was kind of silly mm. so and it was just it was the one like I said it wasn't it was it was just out of context for the rest of the film and it was clearly a thing that they, yeah. that they do well and not a big not a real big deal I'm not like jumping on about it like but it's, there, occasionally there are things like that that happen in films and they're not about girl power or whatever it is. There are other things that are statements that you go, you don't have to do that. Like, I mean, I, I to be honest, I have a bit of a similar feeling about the, the remakes of all the 80s and 90s classics being made... Oh, uh, like Ghostbusters with just like women. Ghostbusters. Uh, well, I, I with... took my kids to see. Yeah, I took my kids to see Little, which was yeah. one of their choices. And yeah. it's it's a, a female person of color, like they're covering all the bases yeah. version of Tom Hanks film. Yeah, and a million films like that, but it was very much like that. It's that I wish I was big. No, it's the girl saying I wish you were little. It's like it just seems. But not derivative. It seems patronising. It's like you just... Mm. I mean, I, I, that is slightly different, I admit, in the sense that they are making the film for a new audience. So they're making it for people who would never have seen Big with Tom Hanks kind of thing. Oh, you know, you know they're I, make, watched, they're making it I watched for... Big a few weeks ago with Cat. Like, we watched it at home. Um, is it good? Yeah, it's lovely. It's brilliant. But it's it's completely white. Of course. Like it's, you know. Like pretty well everything was, unless yeah, it was an Eddie course. Murphy film from yep. that era. Yep. Um, an interesting thing about, you know, yeah, that that film in particular, uh, Bill the Hills Cop or an Eddie Murphy film, like it was, a, but they were made for white people, those films. The humour sure. and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, like I understand. I, I, I definitely understand 
coming from a position like I'm saying this coming from a position and not about the, the the women but about um the kind of thing of well almost everything is targeted to my you know in the western world of I guess my social standing or you know my intellect you know all those kind of things so it is great that they are it is great that they can make things now and ascribe budgets to go like well, we get a this is a small market that's a small market that's small we're we making stuff for things mm. but the fact that they're so often um, grandstanding yeah. as, a, as opposed to just making a movie with uh with yeah, with the, people who look different or or the, you know they they're actually being political as opposed to just casting things exactly like right that. and the obviousness of it makes it icky yeah and yeah. disingenuous yeah. and so I I notice a lot in advertising now and this I I was only thinking it the other day I don't it was something I would have seen online and it's a it's an Aussie ad and they're a mixed race couple the little girl is clearly Aboriginal the woman is Caucasian and her partner husband partner one would presume is Aboriginal as well because their child is but maybe the child's adopted it's so an advertising company has set out to cast that commercial so they've had to find a child that looks like they might be the progeny of the couple and and it absolutely redresses that those sorts of advertising campaigns absolutely redress the balance or the imbalance that has existed up until this point from fucking when T V yeah. started and everything yeah. was white centric and but the, the the it still feels and I don't I'm I'm working this out as we talk mm. and you might jump in <laughs> before I say something to embarrass myself. Um I'm trying to work out if it's if it's because of my age and because this is the sort of sort of advertising I've been brought up with that I feel that it feels forced contrived yeah yeah so the the cuz everything has been white and heteronormative like that's just the way advertising which, has been forever sure which is also incidentally in the place we live the majority so, yeah. so you kind of like, and yeah, up until this point, you know, these days where there is far more diversity and not just because of, you know, mixed race couples and things like that, but, but people, you know, immigration and whatnot. And there's just, you know, so much diversity in the culture anyway, or small pockets of non-diverse next to another small pocket of non-diverse, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I think is more likely to be the case yeah you know so, I mean? I, so I haven't worked out what I find off-putting about that it's not because there's a same-sex couple in the commercial it's not it's not because there's a mixed race couple it's it just I don't know if it's because of my cynicism about advertising that I feel like fuck well a fucking advertising company team has said what we need is so, and I feel like that's what I see and I just I wonder if my view is the hmm is how a lot of people see it or if actually everyone else is just well this is what we're looking at now I think there's probably an element of uh, I certainly hear a lot in podcasts because I listen to a lot of podcasts and watch things like you do um, in that there is a certain thing about people say people, high achieving people when they are interviewed they say like tell me your story and their story is when I grew up, I didn't see anyone who looked like me doing this. So whether they're, you know, from a, um, you know, an immigrant family or, or something like that, and there's something about, I, and that clearly is an important part of that person's journey. And then you know, a lot of people. So like whether it's, um, like the the recent thing where festivals are saying music festivals are saying like you know half of the people who perform here will be, will be women. Um, you know, half will be men. Like we got to make sure that it's representative of, of, you know, who lives in society. Now, like I have my own ideas about that, and that's not what we're talking about now. But I do think there's an element of well, 
all of these different people who look like this and look, you know, look like that are from these different cultures or in society. So, like, we want to make sure that we do represent, right? Because if that's, well, like I say, that people from that small pocket see people that don't look like them, then they don't think this is for them. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. Yeah. Right? I do think what they probably understand now with that kind of stuff is that people who are from the majority see diversity and don't feel excluded. Sure. So people who are in a minority, if they don't see diversity, they do feel yeah, excluded. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So I do think they've probably done their research and go, like, for example, you know, if I'm a, you know, if I'm a tradie and I'm up for a new ute, like, it doesn't matter who's doing the I want to feel entire to jump or what they look like, right? Because really it's about, well, I guess it's about the utility of the product or the, you know. Mm. Um, or if it's about, you know, health insurance, you know, maybe if my background is like, well, you know, from my culture, we have health insurance, we always have, but maybe someone who comes from overseas, maybe let's say it's a, you know, someone from China, health insurance isn't in their culture. I don't know if it is or not, but I'm hypothesizing. So they come here and they don't, they don't think to buy it. Mm. So they put someone who looks like that in the ad, right? So they go, oh, now we're here and that's an option for us. Maybe we'll look at it to try to attract those. But even then, it's, that's how contrived it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, I, G.I. G.I. Joe. I, <laughs> um, I see a, a, a little bit of foreign cinema and I, I really like Bollywood films. And I've on a few occasions I've gone out to, yeah. hmm, is it Sunshine? Is that where there's a cinema out there somewhere? Yeah, um, yeah, the Village Cinema out there plays a little time. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. They're um, doing uh, Werribee now as well, like you know where you know a lot of people from that background have moved. And to. the advertising in those cinemas is like uh, on the like the the in cinema advertising yeah. is almost exclusively to that audience, yes. which yeah. makes perfect sense like why wouldn't you yeah i certainly don't feel excluded by it no and i wonder if that's because we are in the mind in the majority you know, yeah you know, I, I, yeah what, what you said before I, that's exactly Cause we're like well i because we understand that not that people from other backgrounds don't understand but we're like we're, we're like well i'm going to see a film that's from yeah india yeah, so yeah. it makes sense uh, yeah, and I get it. I mean, I, the advertising should be, should, should. Specific to you. Yeah. 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 But, um, mm, okay. But to the point, advertising should be. I get that. That's understandable. I still think, I still like the idea of advertise a product for its utility, right? And if, if you can't advertise a product's utility, then, and you have to use all this other stuff, clearly you don't need that product. Like, you know, there's that idea of, you know, so many of the things you see advertised. There's the other idea of, like, if it needs an ad, you don't need it. You know, this thing. Because if you've got a fridge, you don't need a fridge. Mm. You, but I'm stunned how often people go and buy a new fridge. Mm. Right, because, oh, this one's better, or this one's fancy. I'm not getting off track, but... Um, I've still got the TV that John Fullman gave me. Yeah, so, like, it's interesting for me. Like, I bought a TV almost five years ago. For the first time ever, I bought a TV. <clears throat> I will never buy a TV until that one stops working. No, why would you? Ooh. Like, but I know people who go, oh, "I want a big one. I want a big one. A big one." Yeah. Huh. Interestingly, now for the price I paid for that TV, I could buy four TVs. Like, you know. um, I like my place in a TV. It's very hot. Yeah, but it's good. You might need it now because your heater's not working. <laughs> um, just turn your TV on. But so the point about. Uh, I understand ads, but I just don't get why filmists need to do it. Yeah. I, I don't understand it. Uh, I, I, yeah, as I say, I think for me with commercials, just because it's a commercial entity, I, I feel like it's... I feel like the, the, the people who make the ads, I don't mean they're forcing it down their throats at all. But I mean, I think the contrivance of putting the thing together is yeah. forced. Well, yeah. there's there's messaging in the ad that's beyond yeah. beyond oh, the that's product. A good way of yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's just specifically with advertising. But yeah, yeah, the the, yeah. the film thing as well. It's like, mm. anyway. Yeah, TV seems to do a much better job of it because at least the TV tends to have 
um, over an eight, ten episode series has more time to develop the character and the story. Yeah, and they have more characters, so they have more characters and and subplots. Uh, to yeah. to so they don't need to kind of I think, message. I think as or well, if the they do, movie they... thing is just so much about remaking a <sighs> boys thing as a girls thing and a white thing. Yeah, as a, you know, it's yeah. Just really. Yeah. Mm. Fucking write a story for God's sake. Yeah, well, maybe I mean, like, maybe there's an element to that of just going. Well, we're just making stuff for that audience, and now we're making stuff for that audience, and you know, they would never. Like I said, there's probably a whole bunch of people from a different background, you know, or different skin color that would have never seen Big. It's thirty years old. Yeah, uh, I yes, you know, and I have. So now I but now I know the difference. But if if I'd never seen the original version, that's the original version. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's what my eleven year old has seen. Yeah. And I guess it's interesting that what I love about doing this with you is exploring that idea and kind of, because as you and I have discussed in the past, I am not chained to any idea about anything at all because, well, you know, I know that that's a silly thing to do. <clears throat> but also, as time goes by and more information comes to hand, then you're, you're, the complexity of your understanding of something or just your experience can, can evolve. Um, and these kind of things come up and you go, what? Like I said, I was watching this movie. I was really into it. It was really great. And then this thing happened that had nothing to do with the story or the plot. Mm. And it was clear, like, propagandist messaging. Yeah, and you say, why did they do that? Well, I know why they did that. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's literally, you know, I don't know what this scenario is, but somebody in a boardroom somewhere has gone, this has got to happen. You know, absolutely. And because I even remember, like as a kid, um, I, even if it's this, because this could be the explanation. Because I remember as a kid having a, a DC Comics book and a Marvel book, and there was like a compilation of a bunch of stories, right? And there was a poster thing in the middle that had all of the DC characters, like this beautiful piece of art yeah. with all the characters, right? And then. I think somewhere else in it, there were all the there were all the male characters, and somewhere else all the female characters. All right, that's awesome. So maybe there was I think there was one in the the Marvel one I had as well, where they separated like these here's all the girls and here's all the boys, like in you know, um, in the same thing. And for me, maybe what that was in the film was exactly like. Um, Doing that, like remember sure. those books where those compilation books, those the annuals, they used to call them annuals. Yeah, yeah. All right, maybe it was that. But what's that got to do with the story? Like, so why are you doing an, an homage to a comic book annual? I know yeah. it's a comic book film, but it's got nothing to do with the story. No, and also <sighs> you you just made the point that it had all the girls yeah. and all the boys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, do you know what? There's a really I wonder if I watch this movie again, if at some point in exactly that fight scene, there's a shot where all the boys light up. Uh -huh. There might be. And I might be just so used to that because I watched, uh -huh. well, I've been into comics for so long. Maybe that's the case. That would make the difference. That like, would make the difference. That would make the difference. Maybe it's there and I just didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. Right? And then maybe that makes me in this story a bit of a dick. Right? So I'll watch it again and I'll report back. All right. Then, great. Yeah. I'll go watch it again and report back because I would be and interested. You've got three hours to spend? I'm, do you know what? For the sake of working out whether I am, whether I've got a little bee in my bonnet about something, and they're about the you know this lineup of female characters, that I have missed the lineup of male characters. Sure. Yet, however, there are far more. Over the course of the thing, there are more male characters. So if they happen to line up, then maybe. You know, that's also just incidental. But I wonder if I've not, I've missed that. I wonder if I have, and I've just concentrated on the other thing, and then I, I will, I'll realise that Eat maybe I'll. Hat. Well, maybe I've got some work to do. But I'll I'll just check that out. Interesting. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All right. I I I'm wait to hear your. Terrified almost that that would be the case, and I go fuck. I'm a real dick. No, no, it doesn't, but, and it doesn't make you a dick. Well, maybe it makes you a, a product of your upbringing, like we all are, man. 
It does. Yeah, just to, and, just... and the fact that, I mean, you know, I don't think you are going to find that, by the way, but also uh, that you would process that even at this stage of saying, mm, it means I've got some work to do. That's fine. We've all got fucking well, got work, work to do. You're right, yeah. Jesus, man, we've all got work to do. We should, uh, I thought this would be just a quick sort of half an hour well, it's not, sometimes they go for longer. Mm. They haven't recently, but yeah. Um, in many respects, to cap this off, I'm glad that you turned around and went home last night and had some time to yourself. Would have been really Fuck nice. You. <laughs> it would have been really nice to have you there because it was a lovely night. But it seemed like um, if there's a, uh, you know an upside to that happening, it's uh, you, maybe you did the thing that you needed to do for the night and give yourself a bit of a break. The cat was certainly happy. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm. Those things are important. Mm. So, um, <sighs> glad you're feeling a bit better after Aki. Thanks, man. Thanks. thanks Thanks for the gig. Thanks, thanks for sharing. the chat. Thanks for the thing. Thanks for the stuff. Back next week sometime for episode number 100. <laughs> yeah. That's really well done to us. Good yeah. Job. Fuck yeah. The care. Fuck yeah. It's almost two years. Yeah, That's man. what that means. Uh, I think we started in June, and we released them all in July. But you'll be away. We so we can't do like a no. thing. Yeah, we still we got to work that out, don't we? We yeah. better do a practice <coughs> Skypey one. Sharks. Mm. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Drive See safely. Good. Bye. Bye. Wait, you didn't do your thing. It's a lot of biscuits. Oh, fuck it. The lights out. God London. says it's over. <laughs>